and Brexit negotiations should accelerate over the months to come, says a joint statement from the UK Prime Minister and the President, of course, of the Commission. What does that actually mean? Let's find out the thoughts of David Scullion, Deputy Editor at Brexit Central. It reminds me a bit of, there's a great Western uh, starring Dustin Hoffman from the 70s. Good morning, by the way, David. Called Good morning. Little, called Little Big Man. And in that, a Native American says, our land was being stolen by the white man. And we went to the White House and spoke to the President, and he kept us waiting three days. And he said, we will endeavour to persevere. And then the Native American went, he went, and I went home to the tribe and told them that, and we declared war on the white man. What does this actually mean? Negotiations should accelerate. Unfortunately, I don't think it very, means very much. Yeah, they both made a joint statement saying Brexit talks should accelerate. But uh, EU leaders are still demanding that EU courts will oversee the rights of EU citizens in Britain, which is just totally unacceptable to the British side. Yeah, it sounds quite good. And, and if you saw the pictures of them coming out of the meeting, um, they, they did a heat. Jean-Claude Juncker did a big bear hug with David Davis. Uh, but actually, I don't think it's really progress at all. Do you think they're dragging their feet to try and get more money out of us for the separation, the divorce bill? Yeah, undoubtedly, that's what they're doing. But interestingly, I think it's now, it seems like it's the Commission, so uh, Michelle Barnier, the Chief Brexit Negotiator, it actually is, is really a dove on this issue and it's the people that are dragging their feet is Emmanuel Macron and um, Angela Merkel who have inserted at the last minute um, this ECJ demand. He's actually wanted to move on and forget about talking about the bill for now and talk about trade because as the EU always says nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. We've got on Thursday the prospect and I'll put it no more strongly than that of the European Council rejecting British requests to at least open the door on trade and transition talks. If that happens, what should be their next move, David? I mean, that's almost certainly going to happen. We've got another EU Council summit on the 14th of December where they'll um, decide again whether Britain's made sufficient progress. But I really think the British side should be asking, has the EU made sufficient progress? Uh, does the EU look like a serious negotiating partner? Does it look like somebody whom we can actually do business with? And at the moment, that really looks like no. And I think Theresa May needs to step up the rhetoric and actually step up the preparations for no deal, which will actually be fine. It's not something we'd want, but I think no deal is a good thing. We can strike trade agreements for the rest of the world straight away. Uh, we can stop paying a penny into the EU budget, and we can take back full control of our laws. So I think that's really what she needs to be uh, stepping up and doing and, and really talking about to pressure the Europeans to get a good deal. It does sound, I feel as if we're wading through treacle. Do you think the Germans are behind this delay? Are they most resistant to us starting the trade talks? Yes, it's, it's Macron and, and, and Merkel, so it's the French and the Germans who have, who have put this... Uh, but this uh, thing in at the last minute to the uh, EU, of the EU Council summit saying that you know, Britain has to still uh, be subject to the EU courts. And, and they, they took a tough line on this to prevent it looking like the EU are giving any ground away. Except, of course, we've had not a concession. We've had a commitment from our government saying whatever happens, you know, we will, be, if, provided we get reciprocal agreements, there'll be no problems with EU people staying in this country. OK. And yet we haven't had that same offer extended, as far as I'm aware, from the EU. At the very least, that will be a building block, the first step on the way towards some kind of trade talk. Yeah, I think you're right on that. Britain has made a, a really generous offer to EU citizens in the UK, which just hasn't been reciprocated. And I thought this would have been sorted out um, as soon as Article 50 was triggered. That's what I predicted, that it would be done basically the, the day afterwards. And it's just an example of how much the EU are dragging their feet, that they haven't sorted this out. And it's exactly what we saw with David Cameron when he went around uh, to Europe to try and secure some concessions ahead of the EU referendum. Theresa May is at risk of being dragged into the exact same thing. Because we were getting speculation yesterday, people, it's always sources close to the negotiating table, were saying that a deal was very close on residency, but again, the stumbling block seemed to be money. And, I mean, what, do you think we should pay them anything, David? There are things to pay, but we shouldn't pay anything unless we have some kind of trade deal. And uh, something I heard was that um, EU residency rights can get sorted out uh, tomorrow. It's, it's all been agreed, but basically they need to make it still look as if there are more things than money, whereas the only thing that they want is our money. And we shouldn't be paying anything unless we have some kind of trade agreement. And, and the things that we should be paying should only be things that we've um, signed up to. We shouldn't have to pay for trade, as it were, because they get our trade too. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. This unearthly hour, that was David Scully in there, Deputy Editor at Brexit Central at 6.28, talking to me, Paul Ross. And I want to hear from you this morning. Please get your calls in early. It was very busy on the phones yesterday. So get your calls.